Take a look at this code. Looks harmless, right? We're assigning a list of enemy components, which clearly inherit from mono behavior, into a list of mono behavior. So why does this throw a compile error? A lot of devs assume this is a polymorphism issue. Maybe the types aren't compatible the way they think, but that's not what's going on. This isn't about class inheritance. It's about how the C-sharp compiler treats generic types. Today, we're gonna to break down three powerful and often misunderstood concepts in C-sharp generics, invariance, covariance, and contravariance. By the end, you'll know exactly why that line fails and how to design smarter, more flexible code using the C-sharp type system. Let's make a few Unity C-sharp classes to help us understand these concepts. We could start with an enemy class that just has one public member, an integer to represent health, and then we can have another class, we'll call it boss. Boss inherits from enemy and has one additional member. Now we're gonna use these two classes in another class that I'm gonna call targeting system. Here I've commented out the compiler error from the beginning of the video, and instead I'm gonna make a new list for all my bosses, just a new list of type boss. Now, because boss inherits from enemy, I might assume that I can assign that list into a variable of type list enemy, but I can't. Even though every boss is an enemy, list boss is not a list enemy. That's because a list of type T is invariant, which means that even if two types are related by inheritance, their corresponding generic types are not. Let's take this a little bit further. I'm going to add another method to our targeting system. I'm just going to call it damage all. This takes in a list of type enemy. For each enemy in the list, I'm just going to decrease the health by 10. Now, even though every boss is an enemy, I can't just call damage all and pass in my list of bosses. Just like before, C Sharp refuses to treat a list of boss as a list of enemy. This is still invariance. This is not about the values inside, it's about how the type system treats generic containers like list of boss versus list of enemy. The vast majority of generic types in C-sharp like list, dictionary, and hash set are invariant. That means you can't substitute one with another even if their type arguments are related by inheritance. Invariant literally means cannot be varied. This means the type parameter is locked. You can't vary it. List of type boss is a different, unrelated type from list of type enemy, no matter what the inheritance hierarchy says. Now, what if we make a small change to our parameter in the damage all method? I'm gonna change this from list of type enemy to I enumerable of type enemy. Notice that immediately our compile error disappears. So what's going on? We're still passing in a list of boss, and we're still treating the elements as enemy, just like before. The difference is that I enumerable is defined as covariant. This means it allows substitution of more specific types, like list of type boss, when a more general type, like I enumerable enemy, is expected, but only in a read-only context. I enumerable T is read-only by design. There's no way to add, remove, or modify elements. Let's open up the interfaces for I enumerable and I enumerator and take a look. In C Sharp, covariance can only be applied to interfaces and delegates. Notice that these two interface definitions include the out keyword. That out T means the type parameter T is only used in output positions, like the return values or properties you read from. It tells the compiler this type is safe to substitute with a more specific one because nothing is ever written into it, only read from it. That's why we can treat something like a list of boss as a more general type I enumerable enemy because we're just enumerating, not modifying. Now we can show that I enumerable is read only. Let's try a few common mutation operations. You can't add, you can't assign by index, and you can't clear. None of these work. That's because I enumerable T doesn't define any way to modify the collection. Imagine if this method did something like added a new enemy to the list. Now our list of boss would have something that isn't a boss. And that's exactly what makes it safe for covariance. We can use the more general type because it's read only. Now let's flip it. Contravariance is the inverse. It allows us to substitute a more general type when a value is only ever being passed in. While covariance is about pulling data out, contravariance is about pushing data in safely. Just like covariance, contravariance is only supported on interfaces and delegates. So for this example, let's make a new delegate handle target of type T. 
Now let's write a method in our class that matches this delegate signature. This method, handle enemy, takes in an enemy and just outputs something to the console. We can assign that method to a delegate instance that expects an enemy, which works just fine. But now watch what happens when we try to assign that to the same method, but using the type boss. It doesn't compile. Even though boss is an enemy, the delegate types aren't compatible because the delegates are invariant by default. And this is exactly the kind of situation where contravariance comes in. Contravariance allows you to substitute a more general type when a value is only used as input. So how do we do that? Very similar to the use of the out keyword. Here we're going to use the in keyword. As soon as we add the in keyword to the delegate signature, the compiler error disappears because now the delegate is contravariant and the type substitution is allowed. Now that we've added the in keyword to our delegate, the compiler understands that it's safe to assign a handle target enemy to a handle target boss. So if I were to create a new game object with a boss component on it, I could change the boss's health to something different and run that boss handler, which is really an enemy handler on the boss. It compiles fine. Now using the in keyword says nothing about immutability. You're still allowed to modify the object you receive. So maybe in our handle enemy method, we might actually want to change the health of the enemy. This is perfectly valid and it makes sense because boss inherits from enemy. So anything that can handle an enemy can safely handle a boss too. The compiler knows it's type safe to pass a boss into a method that expects an enemy. However, it's important to note C Sharp still needs an explicit in keyword to allow that substitution. When I was a beginner, learning about variants and finally understanding why things like list boss aren't list enemy felt like overcoming this invisible wall in my understanding of C Sharp. It made me feel more technically grounded and suddenly I was writing APIs and systems that were not just working, but designed with intention and flexibility. Now let's look at how variance shows up in real architecture, not just in toy examples. Imagine you have multiple factories in your game, one that spawns enemies and another one for bosses. Both inherit from mono behavior and you'd like to treat them polymorphically through a shared interface. Here's where covariance makes a real difference. We define a generic factory interface marked with out t because it only ever returns values, it never accepts them. Then we can have concrete implementations, one that produces an enemy and one that will produce a boss. Now here's the power of covariance. If I were to create another class here called enemy spawner, the enemy spawner could keep a reference to an i factory of type enemy. Now in our start method, or perhaps using dependency injection or a service locator, I can assign an enemy factory into this reference, or I can assign a boss enemy factory. This is exactly the kind of small design choice that makes your systems more modular, more composable, and more future-proof, with the compiler helping you stay type safe. This is due to variance, not polymorphism. For example, if I were to remove the out keyword from my iFactory definition, immediately we see we have a compile error. The boss enemy factory is no longer assignable to our iFactory of type enemy because our iFactory has now become an invariant. If I restore the out keyword, but I try to add a method to my interface where I am actually taking in a type T as input, this violates the variance contract. If this was allowed, you would be able to pass in an enemy into a factory that only knows how to handle bosses, and you'd end up calling methods or accessing fields that don't exist. Because we've defined our interface as a covariant, we can't use type T in an input position. As soon as T flows in, the type can't be covariant anymore. Now let's look at another example using delegates where we take a closer look at in and out. I've simplified our targeting system class and I'm going to add a delegate similar to what we had before. I'm going to call it target handler. Let's make a few other classes we can use for this example. A target that inherits from mono behavior and a player that inherits from target. Now if we create a method in our targeting system that just does some debugging, we can have it take in any target as a param and output something to the console. Now we can assign this method as a value into a delegate target handler type player. Now here's the cool part. Because player inherits from target and log target can safely handle any target, the compiler allows this assignment. When you assign a method group like log target to a delegate, the compiler performs method group conversion. And this process allows contravariant matching on input parameters. This behavior is built in. But, and this is the important contrast, if you're assigning one delegate variable to another, 
then variance rules on the delegate type do apply, and that's where you need to explicitly mark in or out. So just like we used in to enable contravariant input, we can use out to enable covariant output, that is, returning more specific types where general ones are expected. The select target delegate is covariant, meaning T can be safely substituted with a more specific return type. We could create one of these in our code by assigning a lambda that returns a boss. Now we can assign it to a more general type. This works because we're only reading the result from the delegate and returning a boss is always safe when the caller expects an enemy. Now what happens if we have a delegate that has T as both an input and an output parameter? The moment we try to mark T with the in keyword, the compiler says, hold on, you're also using T as output. Variance is only allowed when the type parameter is used in one direction only, either strictly input or strictly output, not both. It's also true with the out keyword, though now we see the compiler error appears on the input parameter. Variance is only allowed when the compiler can enforce a single flow of data, in for input only, out for output only. The moment you mix both, it has to fall back on invariance for safety. Interfaces and delegates are invariant unless explicitly marked with in or out. So I hope that clears up a few things about variance and the use of the in and out keyword when it comes to interface and delegate signatures, because we're going to be making more use of this in the future on this channel as we continue to develop more flexible and modular systems. But that's where we're going to stop for this week. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're interested in learning about system building and Unity game development. Link to our Discord channel is in the video description. I'll throw another video up on the screen. Maybe I'll see you there.